Yes, I just want to take this moment to say what's up to our In Soccer We Trust YouTube family. Anytime you guys hit the like and subscribe buttons and drop your comments, it means a lot to us because we're building a family here. We love when you are a part of it. Also, we have a special guest joining us today, Mexican international Hector Moreno, who is ninth all time for appearances for his country. So he is a very big deal, which means what are we waiting for? Let's start the show already. Yes! What is up, everyone? And welcome to another terrific episode of In Soccer We Trust. I'm Jimmy Conrad alongside some of my fabulous former U.S. Men's National Team teammates, Charlie Davies and Hollywood Heath Pierce. And today we are bringing the heat because we invited a decorated player from our biggest rival, Mexico, to come on the show. And this man, who has played in three cups, three World Cups, excuse me, already for his country, said yes. Si se puede, I think is what he said exactly. And I love him for doing that. So let's give a warm welcome to one of the best to ever play in defense for the Mexican national team, Hector <laughs> Moreno! Wow. Wow. <laughs> what an introduction. Uh, Hector, wow. thank, you so much. thank you so much for your time. Now, you played in three World Cups. And I have to go here first, Hector. I have to go here first. Go ahead. You played in three World Cups. Uh, you started against France in the 2010. That was really your debut for a World Cup. That must have been awesome for you. But in 2014, in the round of 16 against Holland, the no era penal for Arjen Robin when he was diving all over the place to beat you guys, you actually broke your leg in the first leg. And I feel like if you'd stayed on the field, you guys would have won. 2018, you get yellow card accumulation. You miss the round of 16 against Brazil. You guys lose. Hector, what I'm trying to say is when you're on the field, Mexico wins. And so what are you saying about the round of 16 and your, and your chances this time around when you look at your group when you have Argentina and Saudi Arabia and Poland? First of all, thank you guys for having me, Charlie, Heath, Jimmy, and thank you for the introduction, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for the kind words. It's amazing you hear, hear you to say that. Ah, all right, it's been complicated for me, you know, because of the big moments of the big stages, you know, for whatever reason, as you just said, as you just said, uh, I was I wasn't been able to I haven't been able to to perform or to help the team on the pitch to to do that. Uh, and talking about the, the 2014 against the Netherlands, uh, yeah, of course, it was hard for me to, to go out of the pitch uh, with a broken tibia and everything. But many people, I always try to say this, you know, because in Mexico is the no era penal thing, uh, hashtag and everything <laughs> for, <laughs> for 10 years already almost. And, 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 and on that action, when I got my, my leg broken, it might have been a penalty of, as well, you know, they, the referee didn't give it. For, for for the Netherlands, so for me it's like not not an excuse to to, to for the national team to, to have lost this this match. You know, it's hard because we've been struggling to to go through through that round. I think we have played so many great games on the during these these three different World Cups. I've been there. I watched so many great games as a fan from the Mexican national team, and still, you know, we haven't been able to to do that to go through through this. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, uh, this this game to to the to the next round, but I hope this 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 World Cup this year it will be the the year. Everybody is working on that. I know because I've been as you said as you just said in three different ones. We always been working for that, but at the end of the day we didn't make it. So we have to just work harder, believe in ourselves, and hopefully also the luck it helps. You know because always the 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 picture we have on the. On a run of 16, it's been very difficult all the time, you know. It's been Argentina, the Netherlands, so I don't know, I don't remember who was the other one. I think two times Argentina, Brazil, that one. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's tough when you go against this kind of opponents, you know. You have to have a little bit of luck on this kind of situation. Of course, you have to beat everybody, but you try to beat everybody. But at the end, it, it will help if the team you, you face is not as strong as one of the contenders for the title. That's well said. Hey, by the way, guys, did you notice that we all have our social media handles on here? But Hector Moreno has H. Moreno, just like his jersey. <laughs> it just shows the difference. We're out here, you know, in the social media world, and Hector has uh, got his name up just like the back of his jersey. Hector, I got, I got, a, I got a question for you. You've obviously been in the national team for a long time. We talk about Mexico a lot on this show, and the evolution of the style of play and the tactics and and everything like that. Have you seen a difference uh, throughout the generations, and do you feel now? this team who we've been critical of, of not having the same identity as before. Do you think that's the case? Or, or do you think that, that um, there's a lot more that we as fans 
or his competitors don't see within the national team? No, I think it's changed a lot. You know, uh, the the way I see it, the the passion, the the will to perform, the will to succeed, the will to to do things that we haven't been able to do. It, as you just said, as I just said before, uh, it's still there. You know, the many. Of course, now we are lucky to have many players in Europe, and it's difficult for them. You know, the, during the qualification games, it's very complicated. You guys in the US, you you felt you felt as well. You know, like. It's hard to play in these kind of countries, in these kind of pitches and, and everything. So I'm not taking, I always try to not make excuses and everything, no, not to play the victim, but it's hard for them. And now I'm playing in Mexico, it's easy for me, but when I was there to come here and play, uh, all of you guys, you, you have played these kind of matches, it's, it's hard. I wouldn't say that it's the, the passion has lost, has been lost or anything like that. I think everything is there. I think there is a lot of quality, a lot of young players, young talent. And the, the guys like me, with more experience, try to help the young players, you know, to, to develop, to, to grow in a, in a better football as a better person. I think everything goes now with a, with a package of a footballer, a professional footballer. You know, I think everything has become more professional in the way you, you, be, you take care of yourself, you train on the pitch, you train outside the pitch, you train at home and everything. So we try to do that as an as a experienced player, we try to help them to, to don't... Don't let them make the mistake we made in the in the in the past. So that's I, I think that that's one of my main goals when I'm with the team. I have hope. I know. I I, I wish every game I, I can play, but I know there are some young players with a big talent with good things. So my my maybe my 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 thing in the national team now is to support in in some other way. You know? No, don't give in yet, Hector. Come on, <laughs> no, you're, no, no. you're not hey, listen, ready. Listen, listen. No, no, I'm not giving in, never. Okay, I'm okay. just saying, you know, like, I try to take this because it happened when I just came there. People who was older than me, more experienced than me, they helped me a lot. Right. So I just want to give that back, you know, because I appreciate that when the people uh, with other players treat you with, of course, pushing you, but with respect, you not know, with like all, 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 all in the days, all uh, like people treat you bad just to make you stronger. I don't yeah. believe in that. I believe right. you in treating you well with respect, but showing you like how it's, how it has to be done. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. But I'm um, not giving in. <laughs> good. <laughs> we, I'm curious because we've never had the opinion of a current Mexican national team player in, in any of my experience in media. So for me, when I was growing up, I always wanted to play in this match, US Mexico. That was the goal. Yes. Yeah, it's the World Cup is the top, but this is a rivalry. And yes. I've seen that from the very you know first match I watched. Is it the same for for young Mexican players when you're coming up? Is it, man, I can't wait to play against the US men's national team? And the second part I'm gonna say is I wish I got a chance to play against you. I never got a chance to play against you. But I'm lucky in, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in ter in ter in terms of US men's national team attackers. Who's given you the biggest problem? Who have you seen that you said, "Man, this is going to be this is going to be a, a rivalry. This is a battle." Yeah. Uh, and the, the, your first question, I I believe it does for all of us. You know, you are the guy, the the, the big guys. You know, like the, the biggest opponent we have in the area. And the, lately, Canada has been fantastic. But like like for the twelve years I've been with the national team, the biggest game we have is against the USA. We play so many games, and for me, it's, it's amazing the 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 the, the way uh, it is in the stadium. You know, for me, it I don't know if you you had this opportunity to play in the U. I don't. It's different because you were in the with the U.S. national team, and we play in America, and it was eighty thousand uh, percent of the stadium Mexican fans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so for mm -hmm. me, that was something. That is something I cannot describe. It's something unbelievable to play against you guys in your soil. And still, the, the Mexican team, like the uh, home team, is just oh, crazy. Stop and, that, Tom. I, 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 yeah, I, I, we know. We know it's crazy. crazy. We, know. we know it's crazy. We get it. We get it. <laughs> you, you are asking me questions, and for me, like I would like to know how, how it has been, you know. But for us, it's like these kind of matches, you know. It is, of course, it's football, but also it brings. It means a lot of things for for the people who support us. Like Mexico plays a lot of matches against you guys, or uh, different kind of teams in the in America. So. For us, it's, it's something special, you know, to to provide to give these people like the sense of uh, patriotism. I don't know how it's the word to say like the connect the, the connectivity, connection, yeah, the connection, you know, with with these fans who are there. They cannot come back from Mexico for different kind of situations. So 
that's the way they, they give everything to support us. So we only have to run 90 minutes, give everything in our power to, to, to make them proud. So for me, that's amazing. And when it's against you guys, it's just, just perfect. You know, and qualification is very tough. It's very complicated playing Columbus or whatever you guys decide to play because just I think there you are really home team and it makes it more difficult for us. Now, Hector, uh, I wanted to answer your question about how we feel when there's 80% Mexican Boo. fans. In the <laughs> no, honestly, what I, what I always took it as, when I had the opportunity to play against Mexico, we played in Phoenix and there was still 80% uh, Mexican fans there. It, had, it was a chance for us to, to prove ourselves, to earn respect, as you mentioned before, that, okay, they might not like us right now, but we can still earn their respect. We can still prove that we can play. And if we can start to sure turn that. their heads, then it gives us an opportunity, which actually leads into a nice question here. We beat you guys in the Nations League final. We beat you in the Gold Cup final. We beat you in World Cup qualifying. We had a nice draw. We maybe should have won in Mexico City in World Cup qualifying as well. Why can't you beat the U.S. right now, uh, Hector? What's going on? I don't know, man, because you guys are pretty <laughs> fantastic. No, I, 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 I always try to, to say, no, since the coach Greg uh, took over from the national team, I have big respect for him because he changed all the... You guys didn't play with him, but I, I think with him, the, the, the way... Or the how you say we played with him as as a teammate, by the way. Yeah, he was um, my teammate. Yeah. Okay. But not yeah. as a coach. I don't know if he was I don't know if he was good or bad. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he was bad like Jimmy. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Uh, no, no, no. But with him, the the, the, the way the US national team tries to play is like more with more how you say they try to build up the game. They have to mm -hmm. they want to be more uh, the, the the main the main team on the field you know they want to be like okay we are confident we believe in ourselves we have a very big talent talented team so they're showing that so that's that's something that respect of course i think that especially the national league and it's not about what who deserve better or more but i think we 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 had a very good game and at the end usa won so that was it but gold cup in cincinnati was it in the qualification and in mexico city the last the last one it was tough for Mexico because you guys play with a lot of confidence. I, I believe that they got the, the, the game in the Nations League gave you guys the, the, the confidence to, to say, oh, look, we can do it. We can still manage to, to play at, at this level. We can manage to play this kind of football because the first, the first game we play against, it was in New York. I think 2019, we beat you 3-0. It was like they were trying to adapt to the new system and everything. But with, with, with him, I think that they are, it's is the potential of the players is just getting better and stronger you know they have like a very very good and young player with a lot of talent and i think this it's, it's he's helping them to, to improve i know that he's been criticized a lot but i think that they just did great in this qualification the most important thing is to go to the world cup that's it it sounds like Hector's still mad that his goal got called back from that Nations League. Uh, <laughs> that Nations totally. League. Because yeah. I'm still unsure if it was outside or not. Hey, <laughs> I was up in the, in the luxury suite with air conditioning. It was nice. I had the perfect look at the line. Uh, you're off, okay? Was Don't worry it? about it. I, I, I mean, we'll never know. You know, there's uh, there wasn't enough camera angles, but I, I, I was thinking, why they didn't put the line like in Europe or something? You know, it was the, mm -hmm. the referee just look at the TV screen and say, okay, I'm sorry. No, no. Hey, you, ask. We'll we'll take we'll take that up with uh, Concacaf uh, later <laughs> on. Uh, but um, Hector, I, I got a question for you on sort of your journey into the national team. So you had you had a single cap, two thousand seven, eight, nine, and then two thousand ten, you went to a World Cup, and it has a, a similar trajectory to, to to jimmy conrad in the sense of when you came in and then being established in the national team for a relatively short amount of time and then played in the world cup uh with this current group of players you know again we we, we know the full pipeline of everyone from 15 to 18 right now in the u.s and the talent that we have coming up is there a player that hasn't been capped that has a potential to to make it for this mexico side into a world cup is there a pipeline of players that we're not seeing uh that are that are the next generation other than you know um Esten Flores and and some of these other guys that are that are that are or Marcelo Flores, sorry, that are that are more yeah. visible. Is there any other players uh, that 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 have a potential to break in before the World Cup? I don't know. It's hard to tell right now. I think the guys who played yesterday against Guatemala, uh, there are some sort of some of the guys who can still make the run. You know, always something can happen during these six months that is still left for the World Cup. 
that maybe one big big talent comes up and and try to shine in the World Cup. But it's 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 very difficult. I think it's like I me I wasn't I just play one like international match back then. But I was like one and a half year already with the team, always on the bench. But I was with on on the process, you know, not playing much. But I was I was able to to travel with the team and to to help the the guys in every situation that I I could help. Uh, I was like sort of a kid man, but uh, <laughs> just helping the guys. But uh, but I was there, you know. It's it's very difficult to to come from out of nowhere and to make it in the last six months of the. Comp- of course, it can happen. I hope it happens because that means that this guy can be something very serious and it will help the team. Uh, from the the guys who who were not during this process and still like the the the, the biggest. So the biggest talk it's about Marcelo Flores. I don't know him personally. I never trained with him or met him, but I've just heard fantastic things about this guy. So I hope that he can develop, grow, and and if it's during this World Cup, fantastic. Hector, you have the whole field in front of you. So when you're looking at this Mexican national team, and for me, I said this is the before World Cup qualifying. I said this is the best front three that you can have in Concacaf. When you're looking at the quality of Tecatito when he's fit, and you're, you're looking at Chucky Lozano when he's fit, and Raul Jimenez. It hasn't worked out. Goals have not come. Now, Chicharito is is, is scoring <laughs> goals in the Galaxy. Is that we go. is is that a, is that something <laughs> where you think it's possible he could come back in and play himself back in, or is you guys have moved on as a, as a national team and it's whoever is here right now has to. Is he your John Brooks? That's what we want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I I I think it's possible, and it I hope possible. he comes back. You know, I always say, I think we we he deserves a lot of respect. He's a he's a uh, the top scorer on the national team. It's something easy to say, but very difficult to achieve. And he's still on in good form. He's showing, as you just said, with LA Galaxy. So I hope that he can he can come back to the national team because. For me as a defender, when I have him in front, if I have to defend him during, I play against him during uh, as a rival, also during training, is something special, Javier. You know, Javier has a lot of talent, has something that is not easy to find in any in in, in the strikers. You know, so I I believe that Mexico doesn't have the uh, how you say the luxury to 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 miss this kind of play. You know, to come give you something. I don't know if as a starter or not starter, it's not my job. I just want him to 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 be able to compete with us, to be part of the last 26 players who will be in the World Cup. I believe everybody who is Mexican or by beard or by however it is, is it, it's open to to fight for a spot in the final list. So I hope that he does this, he gets this um, this opportunity. And I, but I spoke with him. Last time he's open to do that. He wants to do that. He wants to give the last try in the last World Cup. So I hope that I don't know what what has to happen to, to for that to to become reality. But I hope that it does. You should you should have done the same for for your boy Carlito Vela. Come on, man. Yeah, uh, man, but, <laughs> but this guy he, he retired already. So yeah. I know, <laughs> but it's yeah. like he, you know he's so talented. It, it, it it's Incredible. one of those things where I'd like to see him play because he he's so gifted, but. For Raul Jimenez, is it one of those things where you're seeing him play, he's getting in the right spots, but he's just been out for so long that he still needs time to get back to his his previous level? Is that what you guys are thinking in the locker room? It's, okay, Raul will get there. We don't have to necessarily worry about him now. Don't ask the yeah, defender, don't... Charlie. Ask, you're the striker. You you tell <laughs> no, us, Charlie. No, 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 I, I want to know yeah. what they're saying no, in the locker room because it's but, different. No, than... but, but it's true. It's true. For whatever reason, like Tecatito was struggling with Porto with con- – contract situation you know now what when he's in Sevilla he's finding his his sharp and everything his sparkle he's shining there he's doing fantastic so for us that helps also you know to to become to be more relevant with the national team to be more uh, important for the national team his current situation at the club before like in the beginning of the qualification he was not having a lot of time uh, playing time with Porto because many things were happening and now when he was when he moved to Sevilla, everything changed and he seems happier, he seems more confident, everything helps. And for Raul, the same, you know, he, he was doing fantastic and then this horrible accident happened. So for him, it's not, it's not been 
uh, I, I don't believe with, with me I just had a broken leg and it was difficult to come back I cannot imagine how how he can feel after a, a, a an injury like that in your head but I, he's working hard he's trying to I just say no we as a team we support him of course we want him to score more of course everybody wants him to score more but we want him to be just as fit the fittest possible in, in the World Cup him Tecatito uh, Chucky whoever play of the first 11 who Tata Martino decided to start in the first game. We want them to be the, 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 on, on the third at their top level, you know, it's the most important thing. But it, it, it's, of course, as you just said, you know, in the dressing room, we, we, we try to just, just show uh, patience yeah. and, you know, to give them the confidence to, 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 to get back to, to all ways and to, 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 to feel happy and to feel productive for the team. We're speaking with 122 caps, Mexican international, 34-year-old defender looking to play in his fourth World Cup for Mexico this upcoming winner, Hector Moreno. Now, Hector, there's a big conversation over here in the States about development and how you develop players. And should they stay domestically? Should they go over to Europe? And you played for Pumas growing up in your youth career, started your professional career with Pumas. Then you went over to Holland, played for Azed Alkmaar, then made the move to Espanol, where you had a couple of good seasons there, played in Spain, ended up in Roma, a Real Sociedad. Now you're back with Monterrey. Shout out to Valentina, who's been following us for a long time. She's a huge Monterrey fan. How important was that for your development to go over to Europe at a relatively young age and cut your teeth over there and then obviously grow to play for some, some big clubs over there? Well, my own experience, I think, is the best that you can do when you are young. You know, you you go there, you 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 find things that you you are not you you are not gonna be able to find here in Mexico. In my my experience, and I, I you struggle with everything. You know, you try to you grow up as a person as well. You know, I moved from Mexico to Holland. I didn't understand any of English, any of that, any anything. You know, I I never seen it's not my life. So for the first time, when I was there, something that. You have to adapt to yourself to, to to have a good life outside the pitch because at the end of the day, the football is more or less the same everywhere. But when you adapt to these kind of things, you are open your mind to to talk with different kind of personalities. And I was lucky, very very lucky, to have very uh, amazing coaches that helped me a lot through my uh, career to to help me to understand more the game, to help me to 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 grow as a player. So. My own experience, maybe some other people will say, you know, it's better you you guys stay there two, three, four, I don't know how many years, and then you make the jump. Me, I jumped when I was uh, 19 years old, 20 years old, with only 25, 30 games. But more than half of that, I came on 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I believe only 10, 15 games, I played like full, full game. I needed that. I wanted that, and it happened. So for me, it was the best thing I could ever done because I played there. I, I made my dream come true. Uh, I, I, I grew up as a player a lot and as a person as well. You know, it's it's more as as as, as an everything, not only as a footballer. Yeah, let me ask you something, Hector, because I, I I it's I need I need a story from you, okay? Because we know <laughs> what it's like for for Americans when we travel anywhere in Concacaf. You can have pretty hostile environments, times where things are crazy. You know, our first time going down to like, Guatemala or Honduras, where it's the canine dogs and the AK 47s and the security <laughs> and all these things that we've never seen in our life, right? And yeah. and and we talk about going to Azteca and Mexico and just the hostility and difficulties of playing in these places. Was there a single moment or some point in your career where you went somewhere for a match and felt scared or nervous or felt un unsafe? Because, it, you know, I guess I'm trying to bring the stories of CONCACAF to the world of just how much uh, pressure and how much goes on and the hostility and uh, everything that can go into trying to get results uh, in CONCACAF. Like Conca like like Columbus, Ohio. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can tell now because I'm not going back there, I believe. <laughs> it was my last qualification. No, of course I felt. I think uh, just all, uh, I don't know which, I think was one, one of my first game I worked with the national team was the, uh, for the 2010 qualification. So imagine I was 18, 19 years old. I don't know how, how I was. And we were in Salvador, Cuscatlan. Tough, tough match, man. And after I think, that even though we lost the game 2 1 or something, we had to stay like more than one hour inside the dressing room 
because people were throwing everything, you know, because they have in, in, on top, it's not like full cloth, the, the, the wall. Yeah. They have some small spaces that they, they were throwing everything. I cannot tell you yeah. uh, <laughs> everything they were throwing. But you can imagine the worst thing they were throwing through there. But we cannot leave the, 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 um, the stadium, the dressing room. And it was tough. I was very young. We lost the game. We were struggling to, to go to the, to the next uh, World Cup. It was very hard and tough. And also, as you just said, you feel like everybody just, they're just going to open the door and do whatever they want with you. At that moment, I didn't feel like the police was with us. I didn't feel like we had support of anybody. So it was tough. It was like a, a tough experience. But I, I, I don't play. As we were talking before. I had only one uh, match before going to the, to the World Cup. But this kind of situation helped me to, to understand you know, what it means to be part of the national team of Mexico. So in, in all your, your time with the Mexican national team, when you're playing the U.S., who was the most difficult player that you've had to defend? I, I forgot to. Yeah. Ah, it was tough to play against USC. Big man. You guys would always uh, go at it. I, the yeah, wrestling, yeah, yeah. the fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and I, actually, I don't have like a problem with him. Not during the game, we are, he's a fighter, he's a winner. I, I try to be myself and... It's, it's, it's tough to play against him because he's so big, but he is still, he has so much athleticism that he's so slow. He's not like, I don't know how to say in Spanish, you, in Mexico, you use the word tronco, like <laughs> this yeah. technical gifted, you know, and it's tough. I like him a lot too. It was difficult to play against him, but I, as a player, I think he was tough. He was very good. I played against Sardes as well, Sargent lately. And I don't remember Erk. I think I played against Circular something. Oh, okay. It was very, it was, it was very easy then. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> got, got him. Got her. Oh, by the way, Her Hercules has been going on this thing where he says, you know, he's he's ranking the, the best Mexican players of all time. In okay. in your in your mind, who's the best Mexican national team player of all time? Claudio Suarez. You had to say one. Oh, sorry, I you're asking Claudio Hector. Suarez. <laughs> <laughs> National team player or Mexican player? National team player. Who's the best national team Mexican player? Good, good question. Uh, it's between Rafa Marquez. Hey, no and... between, Hector. No between. <laughs> no. If, you, if, you have to, if you have to give me one name. You're in trouble now, you know. No, Rafa, Marquez. <laughs> Rafa Marquez for my position. I always admire him and I think what he's done. Go, going through... Brazil, it was difficult for us to think that he will be there and he played a fantastic World Cup. He even go to Italy after that. And also in Russia, you know, he was 39 years old and during trainings, it was amazing how he trained, how he was patient still about this, you know, giving, giving it all to, to help the team. He was not starting most of the matches, but the, 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 the only presence of him during training and during the camp, it was fantastic. Yeah, he's so smooth on the ball, and he's so, so good at just Fantastic. always, always cool under pressure. I always respected that from Rafa Marquez. Only one of three players to ever play in five World Cups, so that was a nice choice. I was so thankful when he got sent off against the U.S. in Columbus when I was part of that uh, 2010 <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It was your fault? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't my, no, that, he did that to Tim Howard, but I played with him at the Red Bulls, and Jimmy is right. He was just so calm. Yeah. And yeah. like also like in the meal rooms, he would just sit quietly and not say much. Very and then he would just start laughing for like 10 minutes about things. <laughs> like he was the most quiet, soft spoken so guy. And then so on the chill, field, yeah. he had no problem if a young guy took too many touches, just taking Boom. them down to teach him a lesson. Yeah. Well, he, <laughs> the, the good thing is he played in MLS. Quantum Blanco played in MLS. I'm, you could go down. The, why haven't you? come to MLS. You've played in Liga Emekis before. Why haven't what's what's holding wait, you back? Wait for me, my friend. Wait for me. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Okay. I, I need somebody who take no no. I, I had options, thank God. You know, I always uh, I mean always grateful for the people who called me to to go over there. I think that the moment uh, especially now when I was coming back to America it was through Mexico and MLS and I had this amazing opportunity to come to Monterrey and I could not you know, I kind of let it, let they're it pass. They're pretty good. And, yeah. yeah. They're pretty good. Yeah, team. Pretty good are, team. I, at the moment, we are the champions of CONCACAF, so that, that will end. <laughs> well, that's going to change. Yeah. That's yeah. going to change. Well, that's, a, that's a question I have for you, Hector. I wanted to ask about the CONCACAF Champions League final because it's a club that you started your career with, had your youth career, Pumas, yes. drawing 2-2 last night with the Seattle Sounders. Referee, 
A little questionable, but that's CONCACAF for you. How do you think Pumas is going to do in leg two next week in Seattle, knowing that it's going to be pretty difficult with a full stadium of Seattle fans? I hope that they, they've been doing this kind of heroic thing every time, you know. So I just hope that it's, you know, in the odds, it's very difficult for them to, to, to go through this and to become the champions. But they, they like this, you know. They were in a comfy situation to kneel. Okay, let's draw 2-2 two, two and go there to fight and to make it even more special for the movie that they're going to make about us afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I think uh, I never played there, but I believe what I hear, like the Seattle Thunder fans as one of the best or, or the best in, in the MLS. The stadium is artificial grass, I believe. It's hard. They make it harder. Mm -hmm. And the team, I I think they have a very good team. So it's going to be difficult for Puma. I hope that they can uh, still be able to 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 compete, to win, and to, to bring the CONCACAF trophy to Mexico again. Mm, well said. I, I got one more question for you, Hector. We, you know, um, we're talking about the, the U.S. players playing at uh, more difficult environments, bigger clubs, going through the pressures of playing, not playing Champions League, just a lot of games of consequence and the importance for, the, for development. But describe what it's like to be a Mexican national team player when things aren't great in terms of the media, the <laughs> pressure, the social media, like everything. Like what is a day like when Mexico loses uh, for you in terms of? <laughs> Your Twitter feed, your Instagram, you know, like, I mean, it's got to be no, wild. No right? mommy's way. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the, the most, the, the smartest thing to do is to get off the phone for a couple of days and yeah. don't look anything because it, it's very hard. It's toxic, I think. Uh, still, but it's social media and these people who always who hide behind the computer or whatever. To, That's and what Charlie does. They just throw hate. <laughs> <laughs> they just throw hate away and everything but the real life like when i go out with my family or whatever like people is cool people is nicer than than it is in social media you know as a mexican like the media also is always trying to to put pressure i think it's part of the it's part of the the package it comes with being able to play with the national team you know it's been a long time i've been there i i leave everything like good times bad times but it, it's it's hard sometimes it's it just because they, it goes beyond football, you know, like it's, it's, they, they start talking about social, uh, I say personal life and this kind of things. I don't like, I, I understand that you can criticize if I play good, bad, or you think I'm shit or not. That don't, it's fine for me, but when people start talking about family things or some other things that is not about football, I don't understand it. I, I think I understand because it's part of the, the football business, but it's not cool. I, I just have to say that, you know, it's not cool to to, 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 to get that situation because at the end of the day, uh, everybody wants to win and you have an opponent in front that is the same. It, it's not to me, we play against you, you're gonna feel the same shit that I'm feeling because my fans are killing me. If I beat you, you're gonna feel shit because your fans are killing you. Just some, 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 somebody has to lose. And yeah, I think absolutely. football, most of the, times you lose yeah unless you are barcelona with guardiola <laughs> most of the time you you lose and it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like the i say the the average when you are a top 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 trainer uh coach you have 60 percent of uh victories or something like this it's just and that means that you are one of the best so that means 50 percent and less is it's about drawing or losing man at this moment in your career, you know, you're looking back, what is the highlight? What would you say is the peak moment for you? And what is rock bottom? What's been the, the toughest moment for you? Oh, good question, man. I don't want to. I made a good question. question. Let me walk. <laughs> <laughs> no, my. It, it, it's, it's, it's very strange, but it's at the same time. My peak level, it was 2014 World Cup. I felt great. Physically fantastic with the ball, with confidence, everything. I had the opportunity to, to sign before the, the World Cup with teams, and but I thought, okay, I'm gonna give my chances to to find some better options, which mm -hmm. were fantastic. But I wanted to to see how far it could go. And the last game I played there, I, I broke my leg and it broke everything. You know, I don't complain. It was part of the part of the game, but it was like very tough, very tough for me to 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 come back from that. And it's been two, I think. This and the action I had with Luke Chow also, because it, it reflects everything on me, you know. 
in 2014, I broke myself the the leg, and one year after, against Mar uh, Manchester United and the Champions League with PSV, uh, I had an accident with Luke. I accidentally broke his leg, and it was tough for me because it brought back all the memories that mm. I had. That it happened to me, so I was thinking everything that I had, I had on my mind back then. I was thinking like I was Luke Shaw again. You know, it was tough for me to 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 be into this accident that is part of the game i understand but mm -hmm. it, it's it's hard it's, shit. it's, it's just such a feeling that uh, i hope that it never happened to nobody but it's just part of the game and it, for me it was tough to, to to recover from that you know it's not easy for me to to go down like i like used to do it before you know like 100 percent you, you you get doubts in your mind at the end yeah. of the day you know you, you don't recover as well and we we're talking about raul i think he has out of course of his mm -hmm. injury you know it's it's normal it's part of your it's not because you want it's your body your 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 mind that is telling you watch out watch out look what it happened before blah, blah blah so this kind of thing man well hector moreno thank you so much for your time uh this has been incredible to have you on in soccer we trust and we hope that we can have you again on the show leading up to the world cup as things get a little bit closer but we're excited that you're going to participate in your fourth World Cup. Uh, aye, aye, aye. Yeah, that's aye. more than all of us combined. So we're, uh, we're pretty jealous uh, <laughs> Thank of what you've you, got friend. going. Hector Moreno, everybody. Hey. There he is. Man Thank you. Vamos, 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 vamos. Vamo. If, you, if you guys need somebody else, let me know. Okay. Up all right. You guys later. Later. Yeah. Ah, Perfect. All right. All right. I love that. All right. Thank, Thank you, Hector. You, Thank, Thank you. Jimmy. Thank you, Heath. Thanks, Hector. All right, everybody else, we're going to take a short break. But when we return, we're going to break down some stuff about the U.S. men's national team. It's what we do. And, of course, we're going to break down that interview with the legend that is Hector Moreno. It's kind of funny, Charlie and Heath. I feel like I'm kind of pulling for him now to have a good tournament and get to play again. That's what happens. We get to know these guys as people. Like, it's you know, it's your twin. It's your, it's your twin. <laughs> he, does, he does kind of look like me a little bit. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Look, we want to make a movie. Paramount is going to come crashing down. We need hits. I got no pass. No Pacino. Brando. He's a nutcase. Can one thing go right with this picture? This movie makes my people look like animals. And that ain't gonna happen. I'm not running. Welcome back, everyone, to In Soccer We Trust. I'm Jimmy Conrad alongside Charlie Davies and Heath Pierce. And we just got done with another excellent interview. That's what you should come to expect from this podcast or this YouTube channel. Make sure you hit like and subscribe on the YouTubes. Leave us comments, of course. We love that. And if you're listening to us on any podcast platform of your choice, hit subscribe. Leave us a five-star review, especially if you want more of these awesome interviews that we're getting. Hugo Perez last week, Hector Moreno this week. I mean, the future is really bright. We have a nice long list of uh, special guests that are be coming on once a week, every week leading up to the World Cup. So that is our guarantee and promise. Now, Charlie, I'm going to come to you first. Anything that stood out from that Hector Moreno interview that uh, he was really candid and transparent. And I really yeah. appreciated that because to your point, you don't see a lot of, let's say, American media getting the opportunity to talk to current Mexican internationals. You never see it. You, I, I don't. I don't ever remember seeing a current Mexican national team player talking to American media. I've never mm -hmm. seen it. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's a first. That's for it. Us. We're, we're well, it's also. I, I, I think. You, I, I think you'll see, see people talking about like match specific things that are tactical, right? Like, not conversational or whatever. Even even the few times he's done other stuff with with CBS, it's it's about a team or a moment or right, a thing right. that he has context to, but not about him and like him as a person. It's pretty wild. Yeah, I, I would say what jumps out to me is one, he's a top man, top man, and just the way he he approaches the game, the way he sees it. You know, he he wants to be a supporter. He's a positive spirit in the locker room, whether he's playing or not playing. He's competitive, but he also wants to, you know, give that, I guess, support to the players who are the younger players who are possibly going to play over him. Uh, one thing that I, I I noticed was the chicharito, right? Because a lot of people think he's done. There's no way, but it seemed to me if I'm reading between the lines that there's, a, there's a support within the locker room that like, Hey, he's working hard. He gives us something different and whether he's starting or, or coming off the bench, that's a player that we need for, for, for ultimate success. If we're at our very best and he's performing, he should be in the team. 
Hey, just because the players think it doesn't mean the coach necessarily. Uh, yeah, we know that. <laughs> we know that. Yeah. Anything stand up for you, Heath? No, I do think the Chicharito thing, just being willing to, like, it would have been really Actually easy. answer the question. Well, it just would have been really easy for him to be like, you know, I don't make the decisions, but I love Chicharito, that sort of thing. Like, his it was much more like, I hope he's there because of the quality of a player that he is. And he thinks that there is a chance, which, which is, again, um, you know, speaking from a, from a very personal perspective, which I think is awesome. But I mean, I mean, for me just to see, just to hear him talk about the U S national team as well. And the difficulties of that, I don't know about you two, but I always felt Mexico were a giant. And when we beat Mexico, at least when, when I was in the national team, it felt like we had done so as the underdog. Um, well, even the though there was a our, our contracts reflected that as well, because I don't know if we discussed this before on the podcast, but if we beat like a normal opponent, let's say, and you were in the 18 and starting level, you get five grand or whatever. But if you did it against Mexico, it was worth 10. Yeah, it was <laughs> yep. it, uh, even U.S. soccer recognized that yeah. it was a big game. And so you felt it in a couple of different ways, including your wallet, Heath Pierce. Yes, absolutely. And and uh, that's that's gone my way once and it, and it didn't go my way <laughs> once uh, by far. And so but but just the, just the, uh, like. That, to hear him talk about that, and also the the other part about playing against the U.S. is is when he talked about playing in front of Mexican fans, like a home game in the U.S. I mean, what an unbelievable feeling! If you were to think about contextually going anywhere else in the world and just seeing it full uh, in a non World Cup of your fans in another team, not a neutral venue, another team stadium, what that would mean for you, like 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 as a player like, on the field. You if know? we went down to Azteca and eighty percent were Americans. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, would uh, get wild. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know how my brain would like, process huh? that information. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I guess that would be, and I'm glad he actually asked us a question with regard to that, because clearly there's some curiosity about our own feelings with regard to U.S. Mexico, and though we might be out there a little bit more than than those players are, because I think they have to be kind of guarded in terms of what they say, because they'll get annihilated in their media, and in a way that maybe our media isn't there yet, or at least not with this sport it was interesting for him to want to know and poke around and have that curiosity as to how we feel when we're playing at home and it's all of his fans uh, cheering for them. And, and um, I, I answered the question by saying it was a good opportunity for us to earn that respect from that crowd who are probably pretty hard on us, probably don't think we're very good at playing, but we have that opportunity to prove otherwise. Charlie, what, what do you feel like when you're in that environment and it's clearly one-sided in favor of Mexican fans? I, I love it. Yeah, same. I I have that same vibe about it. It doesn't bother me. Whenever I play at an away venue, I love the animosity because that I feel off that. Mm -hmm. Ever since I was a kid, I loved when people told me I couldn't do it or I wasn't good enough. And you you I thrived off of that pressure. Yeah. Jimmy, so, Jimmy, Jimmy just wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Not till later. I got there eventually. Later you were great, but like back fair. then, the, oh, Jimmy terrible, was like, no, terrible. you can't say that to me. Chip on no. the shoulder. They're like, no, you're actually not good enough, Jimmy. <laughs> you, 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 want, you want to be in the thick of it. I mean, <laughs> I love it, in terms story. of like the worst, the, the most difficult atmosphere to play in, that is the best. That's at the Mount Everest, the top of Mount Everest yeah. is playing in Azteca, especially the old Azteca when you had 110,000 people in it. So I think for, for, for our, from our standpoint, it's like, let's go. I'm hyped. Although we've both seen there are some players who, who shrink in those type of situations. So mm -hmm. it's not for everybody, but the, for the players that do embrace it, you expect them to kind of carry the team and kind of lead by example. Jimmy, I was talking to Kellen Acosta the other day about his sort of debut at the last qualifying cycle in Aztec of just being thrown in and being like, this is crazy. This is like insane, but this is like it. This is the, 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 the peak of it all. You uh, you played at Azteca, Jimmy, or no? I did not. But you went down also similarly to me as a, as a fan in the twenty in twenty seventeen. It would have been right. That's what right. was it, what was it like for you going into? The, I mean, it was wild. For I, me. I had I played mean, in Mexico City before in yeah. Concacaf Champions League, but it wasn't against Club America. It wasn't wasn't like a World Cup qualifier against Mexico. Did you but have I, mixed I, emotions? I those, did I've you been, like? I've been played in that environment before. Yeah. But, oh, as a fan, when I went down as a fan, yeah. I think at that point I was a few years removed. So some of the triggers when I first retired, you know, you get into the media game, you're right on the sideline. You, you still feel like you're friends. You still feel, you, you know, you have a touch point to, to the teams that are walking out there. A lot of the guys you just played against and you smell the grass and you get the vibe of the lights come on and you're like, you want to be out there. But that that starts to dissipate as as time goes on and you start to really kind of get entrenched into whatever you're doing. I don't so know, Jimmy, point, by the way, it was it, as an interruption, I was at the U-17 national team game yesterday here in here in L.A. 
And that was the like it had been a long time because there haven't been youth national team camps or whatever that I've been around. Mm -hmm. I like it all came like rushing back to me, and I was just trying to be like cool about it. But like that was a weird feeling. Maybe it was because it was the youth, and I haven't been around that in decade plus. But like I don't know. Well, I mean, what, no, what no, was it for you as a fan cheering? You know, obviously helped that it was a draw. Michael Bradley chipped the keeper. That's but right. Like in that environment, like I don't know. No, no, no. I mean that at that at that time, this is pre pandemic, so it was pretty hostile but never in a threatening way it, it felt more of course you're gonna have a couple that are gonna take it to the next level but never really got hurt or any of that type of stuff it was it was a fun experience and i enjoyed it i got to the point in my post career my second career where i enjoyed being a fan i enjoyed just letting go and and not having to worry about you know making sure i'm eating the right things i could go have a couple beers uh and get and get crazy and, and and act like an idiot not in the way but just like over the top energy and, and cheering and enthusiasm and that type of stuff. And so I, I enjoyed it. And it was cool to be there for what was an, uh, probably one of the best goals in U.S. Mexico history with Michael Bradley's chip. So Besides Charlie's. Well, Charlie's, of course, he's doing the stanky leg afterwards. For I mean, that's just like <laughs> oh. he took it to the next level. Oh, Michael Bradley bath, doesn't have that sauce in, in his corner. game. He doesn't have that tool in his tool belt. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's 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 interesting to bring up that U-17 national team thing. And then I'll pass over the mic to Charlie to get his insights. But but there are weird times when when you're in your career and you're done and you go back and there's like these weird triggers. I, I went to Ziggy Schmidt's funeral, rest in peace to Zig and all of our UCLA guys. Now I, I, when I told you my story about UCLA, I kind of had to fight tooth and nail to get there and play. And even though we went and played like a little small side of the next day, I'm talking Matt Reese, Sean Chakiris, um, who's been with our youth national teams as a coach recently. Uh, all, all these guys used to play. I looked up to them so much that when I went back and started to play again, I fell into that where I was deferring to all these guys, even though I was the most decorated player professionally out of everybody at the end of that. I never felt like I was good enough to play with those guys this whole time. It's so weird. And I fell back into that, which was really one of the most odd experiences I've had post-career. But anyway, that's a sidebar. Charlie, talk to me about uh, any any anything that uh, maybe triggered you there. <laughs> no, uh, you know, I think I'm in a, in a rare boat in the sense that I saw – what life is without the game in, in 2009. And, you know, I had to work back to get back on the field, but I was never the same player, even though I was chasing that and you have to keep that mentality. Otherwise you're, you're, you're done. Mm -hmm. So when I was finished officially, I had left it all out there. I had nothing left to give. So even if I was by the field, I was like, I can't, I can't even look at that. Cause my legs wouldn't even move, you know? So for, I never have that feeling like, man, I, I wish that I could be out there. But what I do love and feed off of is, is conversations like this. Like this for me is like the locker room. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I found the locker room in this next chapter of, of, of my career. So, you know, whether it's at the desk, whether it's, it's doing podcasts with you, that is what fulfills that, that I guess that void that you have when you leave pro the professional game, because that's, People can talk about soccer. You can go outside and play with your friends. You can play with your kids. You can still do it. But what you can't get and recreate is that locker room vibe and the feeling. We've done that mm -hmm. with this. And we've done yeah, that yeah. With, with other things. And we're so, trying to bring everybody along with yeah. us. So make sure you hit like and subscribe. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> like, subscribe. More conversations. Hey, I will say this. Hector talked about uh, going down to El Salvador, right? And the first time. And, and I, I was trying to pull that story out because all three of us have those stories of like, you know, from Copa America to everything of just feeling like this, almost your body naturally goes into fight or flight mode of just like, this is so beyond playing each other on the field. But I, when I went and looked at his Wikipedia, he's got five international goals according to Wikipedia, which, you know, may be way off. Mm -hmm. Three of them are against El Salvador. I saw the same. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to bring it up, but yeah. Three of them. <laughs> and he talked about that being the 2010 and then it was like 2012, 2014 or 16 or whatever. And then 2021, like three of his five goals are against El Salvador. So obviously he harnessed that into something where he was like, oh, yeah, um, I'm going to go and get some. I'm going to go and bag some goals against these guys. And all three, by the way, are away in El Salvador. Which yeah, is it's, crazy. it is kind of crazy. Maybe it's a place where you feel comfortable and, and you just kind of visualize yourself having success. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe he's just got to replicate that. Obviously, he did a few times. What I didn't I kind of shorted him on on his bio. Hector Moreno, because he played in three World Cups, but he also played in two Confederations Cups. He played in the Copa America Centenario. He played in multiple Gold Cups. I mean, the guy has been doing it for such a long time, and I guess that's why he's amassed 122 
caps. He also played for the U-17, the U-17 World Cup for Mexico. I mean, he is super decorated despite that what i really loved about him and and i've had the chance to talk to him before he's just so humble you know and and he mentioned rafa marquez being an inspiration for him and we both obviously had admiration for claudio suarez who another player super decorated 175 caps or something for mexico he's also very humble very soft-spoken just goes out there and does his job so i really appreciate uh him coming on and i actually really look forward to having him back on again charlie because as the tournament gets a little bit closer i think not that his answers will be a little bit shorter i don't i still think he'll be open and transparent with us but i think things are going to start to get a little bit more set in terms of who's going to be playing on the team and his role within that team um why is jonathan bornstein catching strays in the chat there's no <laughs> there's no need for johnny bornstein to be catching <laughs> oh yeah strays? Come unless, on, unless you're go. saying that Heath pierce was better i don't know <laughs> yeah. uh, listen i'm Listen, I, I, I pay, I pay my fans a lot of money, you know, <laughs> to get in the uh, chat. you know, to get in the chat, stir it up, you know what to do, you know, uh, no, but, but, uh, but, uh, that, that is, <laughs> that is, <laughs> that is kind of, uh, kind of funny. That's All right. Um, final thoughts. then before yes. we let everybody go here on this podcast and reminder, we're coming back to you live tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. We're going to talk about which players should absolutely be on the plane to Qatar in the midfield for the U.S. men's national team. We also had the chance to get some sound from Phil Neville into Miami's coach, England international, former England international, David Beckham's best friend. That's why I think he's got the job now. I'm just giving him some shade right now. But but he talked about the U.S.'s chances versus England and England's chances at the World Cup. And then there was a good interview yesterday with Kate Abdo and Thierry Henry and Micah Richards and Jamie Carragher about U.S. versus England as well. So we're going to have all that to break down tomorrow that should be a lot of fun so come back and join us for that final thoughts though charlie i'll come to you first um i love i love doing this podcast i I love the guests that we've had um very different unique perspectives uh that's one two hector moreno is a quality guy you you would never think uh, that he is so mature and so compassionate just because he's a warrior you see Mm -hmm. him on the field he's battling he talked about josie being the his toughest opponent which i think is is also funny because you look at our team now, and we don't have a player like that, of that caliber. That's that's what we're missing. To Time take to us. call Josie back in. <laughs> <laughs> Time to take a, a – to, it, for us to go to the next level, we need a striker like that. And, and it doesn't have to be someone who who plays the same way Josie does, but it's someone who has that same effect, someone who's mm-hmm. tough to that deal presence, with. That presence. In the presence. Mm-hmm. So th- that's something that stands out to me. And, and three, man, I'm hyped for the next guest. Are you gonna are you gonna tease? No, not yet. Okay, not yet. <laughs> maybe tomorrow. Hey, whoever we'll that guest may be. Yeah. Yeah. We're working hard on a, on a great yeah. guest for you guys for next week. So just uh, <clears throat> consider that your tease. How about you? Final thoughts, Heath Pierce. Yeah, my my final thoughts are similar to Charlie's. That it, it's it's almost a regret that I have is is the final thought that I have that I never did. Either of you guys change shirts with a Mexican national team player? No, because well, the one time that I got to to play, they were not interested. We beat them to yeah. zero, and they wanted to walk off the field exactly. As fast as possible. And yeah. I, 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 and I just think about that as like as I look off the screen into the back of like some of the fun, um, amazing jerseys that I've traded for Kun Aguero, uh, humble brag there, um, <laughs> Ryan Babel, uh, weird one. Uh, but uh, let me get my Michael Ballack yeah, and, and yeah, David oh, Beckham. But okay, okay all right, all right, relax. Jeez <laughs> Louise, those are getting heavy. Um, got my slot on in there too. Oh <laughs> my goodness, these guys. Um, but you know, when I think about that, I think back at like, the fact that I've become friends with a number of uh, former Mexican national team or current national team players just through the, the media work and, and the humanization and the globalization of information, right? It just, it, it's no longer this gigantic, you need to, to, to not like them. And therefore I miss out on like having this a memorabilia from, from a time that I played against them. Again, it was a dosis arrow and then it was a really bad loss, uh, in the gold cup final. That was never the opportune time, but looking back, I'm like, man, uh, a moment lost when you actually realize like, oh yeah. Hector Moreno, uh, who we've all spoken to before, is like a really wonderful guy. And I'm like, I would have loved to have changed shirts with a wonderful guy, you know? Yeah, but, you know, it's just like it it was almost like you couldn't even think about doing that. Like at the time we were playing, it it was so the rivalry was so strong Mm -hmm. that if you did that, it was like you're weak and you're not. Yeah, you're not you're not in it. You know, it was like there was because there was hatred in it as well. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, maybe even more from their side than from ours. I mean. If, if they took a, and switched with an American, like to show us that type of respect, they would have gotten a lot of heat. And and um, I think the pressure from their <laughs> social media. 
<laughs> you want Jimmy's old teammates from the 1950 team on the pod? <laughs> Hey, this congrats on hey, you know what? congrats on beating England, Jimmy. But now I'm, I'm second guessing that. Oh, oh that's man. so good. That's man. a good one. Know. All right, yeah. Julius C. Clearly Julius. not my burner account. He says we want Jimmy's old teammates from the 1950 team on the pod. You know what? We're ending the podcast there. I'm done. I've got control of this. So thank you so much for your support, as always. Minus Julius C. And we will see you next time. That is tomorrow for more in soccer. We trust it should be a lot of fun. So on behalf of producer Alex and. Charlie Davies and Heath Pearson, Jimmy Conrad saying, we'll see you next time. Later.